Hi everybody, we're going to try to go over file translations in the Game Pass save converter. Seems to be an issue that some people are having trouble wrapping their heads around, so I thought it would be good just to do it beginning to end here in a video. Uh, hopefully that will help people understand how to do it. I This is the second take. I messed up my capture before, but I am going to reset everything so it's as if I'm going into this sort of blind. The first thing that you must make sure to do is that both games must have save files that already exist that you can use to find in the converter, for examples. So I've just loaded up the Steam version, as you can see. This. And in here you can see I just started the game, got past the initial cutscene, and then exited. I have used the in-game menus to copy this file across three different positions, just so I've got three examples to work with. Exit this. And then also open the Game Pass version of the game. Skip. Continue. And here you can see it was a little longer. I didn't realize you could skip the cutscene. Just wanted to make some files to use here for demonstration today. You can see this one is on normal difficulty and only has a, about a minute of playtime as opposed to the three seconds from the Steam version. So now we will exit that and open the save. Con I first tried this with the Bluravian Remastered but it's not a very good example so then I restarted with Ori and the Will of the Wisps. So when I select it, you can see this blinking over here indicating that it was not able to automatically load the Steam save file location. Uh, as I said before, I know where this is, and it's actually still auto-prompted in here. Um, I had to Google to find where this game stored its save files. Just did a quick Google search, or you will the WIF save file location. It told me it stored it in app data, so I loaded up my local app data folder. Um, hit OK. And then now here you can see it has now listed all of the save files within that folder. What we must now do from here to make a file translation is we need to devise the way that the software knows save file zero matches uber state zero up here. You just have to use, you know, look at it and figure it out how the various things match. And then from there you can build a translation to make it function the way that you need to. So in order to build a file translation, we're going to go. So for example, if there was different types of save files, some games might have something like a template that's separate from the actual save game data file. One of the two point games where you had room templates that were saved as separate files from your saved games. So you might end up having multiple types of file translations for those differences. In this particular state, we've only got one type that we care about, which is these two, the Uber State 0, 1, and 2. I think it seems pretty clear that each of these correlates to one of the save file slots within the game menu. So we'll click here, and we're going to try and manipulate this to make it work for that. So we need to look at these and identify what, break it down into various sections that we can then use over here to match the vid individual save files. So if I were to break this down, look at Uber State, that's always the same for all three of them. And then we've got the save file slot number. If I look down here, this has save file, then the number, and then dot Uber State. The save file and the dot Uber State, those are the same all the time. So those are going to be the same. We don't need to think too much about those. We'll use those later when we are building our matches. One thing that we do see is that the number here changes. So we need to represent that number in such a way that we can search for it using regular expressions. So we're going to go down here and we've got our list of named regex groups. Uh, a regular expression group is like a set substitution is done with this dollar sign symbol notation. Um, this format is the format that you will use for queries. So if you look up regex named groups for queries, that will contain information about how to use these. So for this example, we're going to need to give it a name. That's the, what's in this section here. Uh, the question mark bracket, that indicates that this is the start of a group. 
or rather the parentheses indicate that's the start of the group the question mark and the bracket indicate that this is a group with a name and so we are going to give this the name save number and then the part after the bracket before the end of the parentheses is going to be the part that is matched that forms this section of the block I'm not going to go too much into regex as I mentioned but for this particular thing we are looking for a block of things the, this these type of brackets indicate that any value any character within that block is valid so we're going to say any character between 0 to 9 is good so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 are all valid we do not want a plus here because it's only ever one digit and so because of this now this regex group named save number will represent a single number and sort of store that between the two versions for that to make sense now we're going to jump up further and start building our queries so for the non xbox file name we are now going to use our group name that we devised before save number and then we're going to build the rest of this file name around it so save file and then the number and then dot uber state and so then you can see that this is how it builds up to match what that is it'll store save number so that that way when we're building the other half of this we can use it to uh, fill it in it'll go both ways so for that to make more sense let's fill in the blob id which is going to have a similar look let's adjust this to save number again and then this is just uber state and then that save number uh, we do also need to match the container names luckily in this particular case they are completely fixed so we just got to type them in as they are save game for container one and uber state state two for container name two so now whenever we select a file on either the top or the bottom it's going to run this match pull out this save number and then search the other side to find the equivalent substituting in that save number so for example now if I click save file one it's gonna look for a file that's it's gonna match this and say save file oh there's the number the number must be one we're gonna store that and then we're gonna look for the Xbox file that says uber state save number one and so then if I click this you can see it is selected on both panels that is the way for you to tell that your file translation is working correctly whenever you select a file in one panel the equivalent file in the other should become selected so for example if I select 0 up top here it will match that do it the other way say uber state 0 that's a 0 we're looking for save file 0 dot uber state and find it down here from there we can then use this suite of buttons here in the middle to move the files so I think for this particular case why don't we take save file 2 and we will move that from the Xbox save files down into the Steam save files using this button only one file at a time um, the move all button is there but it's not very useful so we'll press this uh, we'll get a confirmation because you know it's always risky to overwrite save files but we're gonna go ahead and say yes now you can see that our save file 2 here has updated with the timestamp of the save file 2 generated up here. So let's go ahead and do one the other way. Let's take save file 1 and let's send that from the Steam version into the Xbox version using the up arrow. We again, we get a confirmation. Hit say yes. Now the save dates have updated to match. So now we'll go ahead and minimize this and relaunch our game. We'll be looking at the Steam version. So the Steam version should now have two save files that are three seconds long and then one save file that is larger. Yep, save file three, we migrated over from the Game Pass version and I could just click here and continue if I wanted to. Yep. 
All right, let's Alt F4 out of there. And go ahead and confirm that the opposite direction worked as well. We'll open the Game Pass save file. And for this one, save files two and three should be one minute long, and save file two should be three seconds long, confirming that we brought the Steam version over into here. Oh, we're scrolled over. Haha. <laughs> there they all are. Yes, zero, one, exactly as I said. Ah, threw me for a loop because I guess it keeps track of where you were scrolled to. I think that will conclude this demonstration. Hopefully this helps everybody who is having trouble understanding how the file translations worked. Good luck getting your games transferred and have a good day.